So I watched the video, uh, Adam Friended. Yeah, friend of the channel, Adam Friended. Um, everybody's favorite atheist. They hate him as much as Stephanie. Um, the, uh, the Think Club, where he was debating, is Christian morality superior to secular morality? And I watched about a half hour of it, and honestly, I, I, I got really exasperated and kind of gave up in frustration. Sarah Michelle seems to be, I think it's her name, Sarah Michelle. She seems to be a bright girl. But she, her version of Christian moral teaching is, you know, a bunch of people commented that it was a straw man. She insisted that it isn't, but it actually was. She was straw manning the entire moral code of the Bible, the entire religion of Christianity. I mean, it's, it's funny. You listen to a certain type of anti-theist talk which she is certainly in the category of this type. And you would think that the Bible is only a primer on slavery. You would think that's the only thing it teaches about, is how to own slaves, how to trade slaves, what to do with your slaves. You know, there's the sum total. Now, Adam kind of fell into the trap that the apologists fall into, as I pointed out with the arguments about slavery in the Old Testament, okay? If you, are, if you are pointing out the fact that there are scriptures in the Old Testament that endorse slavery, and you're using that as an argument against the inerrancy of scripture, that's a pretty decent argument against the inerrancy of scripture. But in this particular debate, that's totally superfluous. I'm relatively certain Adam Friended doesn't think the Bible is inerrant. If you are using it to say that God himself is immoral, it's a terrible argument about that. She, was, she wasn't necessarily doing that. But she was doing the weakest possible version of a standard anti-theist argument. There are scriptures in the Bible that I think are morally unjustifiable. Therefore, that's the sum total of Christian moral teaching. I mean, that's an astonishingly bad argument. And she seemed, to be, she seemed to be saying it with a clear conscience, as if there's no Sermon in the Mount, as if there's no, there's no ethical teachings of Jesus Christ, as if every single person, even all the atheists on Twitter, know almost completely what those ethical teachings are. So I pointed out time and time again in my videos. There is, we, we are called Christians. Christians. Which denotes a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ. We are not called Old Testamentonians. And the Bible is crystal clear on this point. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And then it also goes on to say, in the New Testament, what a Christian is supposed to be following. Okay, it says, the spirit kills, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. In other words, you don't look to the letter of the law. The whole point of being a Christian is you, you are following the spirit and the intent of the New Testament. That's, and there's a strong moral code, ethical code of conduct in Christianity. It's really strong and really pretty clear, and most atheists know what it is. Most people could give you a pretty fair, fair reading of it. She seemed to think it doesn't even exist at all, that the sum total of Christian moral teaching is, you know, the 10 or 15 negative scriptures that you find in the Old Testament and the whatever, handful you find in the New Testament. However many you think there are, 500, doesn't matter. There's, it's not the sum total of Christian moral teaching. There's nothing to do with it. You know, if you're going to give a fair reading of Christianity, let's just take love, for example. You know, there's whatever, 15 scriptures that endorse slavery in the Old Testament, give or take. There's something like 135 scriptures on love. And not a single one of them would she argue with. This is my command that you love one another. You know, walk in love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Not a single solitary one of, one of them would she argue with and go, that's a bad idea, that's morally unjustifiable, that's wrong. If you just took the teachings of Jesus Christ and pointed, them, pointed her to them, summarized it as uh, just this simply, okay? Humble yourself. That's teaching number one. Jesus washed the disciples' feet in his example of humility. Jesus, being the form of God, humbled himself, took up, took up you know, that's the example that was humble yourself. Walk in love towards your fellow man. Let them see your good deeds so they praise your Father who is in heaven. You know, this isn't hard to, this isn't hard to understand that this is actually a really strong moral code. Um, she didn't address any of it. Honestly, she didn't address any of it. She just, she did the standard anti-theist argument. 
you know, the Bible has these scriptures that are bad, therefore the sum total of the Bible is the, these scriptures and nothing else. And, you know, Adam couldn't get her off the point, actually. It was really, so I, I you know, the, the, the kind of, the conversation kind of went, you know, he fell sort of into the trap that the, sort of fell into the trap that the Christian apologist falls into. Uh, he fell into it in a different way. The Christian apologist usually falls into the trap of, you know, the anti-theists will bring up, this is why the anti-theists have been successful with these arguments, because they'll bring up, okay, there's this negative scripture and that negative scripture, and the Christian goes, okay, let me try and justify why they're there, instead of going, okay, there's these 50 scriptures that are positive, life-affirming, and morally correct, and you acknowledge that those are. That's a better argument, <laughs> instead of, oh, let me try and, you know, give you a whole bunch of complicated reasons why the scripture that we both kind of agree is negative is isn't either isn't negative or isn't really there. It doesn't really mean what it seems to mean. That's what the standard apologetic is. You know, the Bible says, do whatever to your slave. And you go, oh, well, it doesn't really mean slaves. It means, you know, six years indentured servant and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, song and dance, song and dance, tap dance, tap dance. Let's just assume for argument's sake that it's correct, okay? The Old Testament endorses slavery. Like I said, perfectly decent argument against the inerrancy of the Bible. It's a terrible argument against the morality of Christianity. Christianity is defined by the teachings of Jesus Christ. You go right to the Sermon on the Mount. Thing number one that he said was first public ministry. And then you go to the Beatitudes. You got eight things right there. I doubt she'd argue with a single one of them. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. I bet you anything she'd say, yeah, amen, that's pretty cool. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. But to anything, should be like, yeah, I think it's good to be merciful. I mean, you can see where this is going. I would invite you, Sarah, if you really want to have a debate on this subject, start with the book of Matthew. Instead of strawmanning the Bible, steel man the Bible. Start with the book of Matthew. Start with the Sermon on the Mount. You will go through the first, you, it starts at chapter, what, five? Five to eight, you'll find two or three controversial scriptures. Two or three things that you'll go, okay, I don't agree with Jesus when he said that. But all the rest of it, you'll be like, uh-huh, yeah, that's good advice. Uh-huh, yeah, that's good. Uh-huh, that's morally right. That's morally correct. You know, it's not rocket science. So they never really got to the, to the substance of the debate. And it's too bad because it would have been an interesting debate. But that's a standard anti-theist thing, you know. There's these relatively obscure scriptures, and I say that, relatively obscure. Relatively obscure. Why would you say they're relatively obscure? They're in the Bible. Because they're not written in the wall of any church across the country. There's no such thing as a Christian group of slaveholders. If we had Christians right now who were owning slaves, and go, look, it says in the Bible, Exodus 23, then it'd be a decent argument. But we don't. So it's irrelevant. <laughs> it's, that's the point. That's the point. So they never really got to the substance of the debate, as far as I'm concerned, and I kind of, I kind of gave up in frustration, you know. Um, she's a bright person. I would like to see you try again, but this time with her actually addressing the moral code of Christianity instead of pretending like it doesn't exist. You know, so I'm sure that she thinks Dr. Martin Luther King, for example, is an excellent role model, excellent moral teacher. He got most of his morality out of the Book of John. Everybody sort of knows that. Most of his morality came from Christianity. You'd be hard-pressed to find a secular person, just in, terms of, just in terms of thinking clearly about morality. Jesus Christ, if you don't think he was the son of God, it's really hard to argue that he wasn't at least in the top ten greatest moral teachers of all time. Most people would say he'd easily the best moral teacher of all time. Most secular people would say that. So you can't pretend that the sum total of the Bible is, you know, the 500 negative scriptures that are written on the anti-theist, <laughs> on like rational wiki. You know, this is why the Bible's terrible, because it says this, and then it says this. Ah, it's not the sum total of Christian morality. You know, it's really not. You got to go straight to the heart of the matter. Who is Jesus Christ? I don't believe he's God. Fine. But you still would probably acknowledge that he's at least in the top 10 greatest moral teachers of all time. That wouldn't be too hard for you to acknowledge. And if you didn't acknowledge that, then we could debate that. And we'd start looking at the stuff that he said, or at least have rumored to have said. And then we'd start examining that in terms of whether it is morally correct, morally justifiable, morally right. It wouldn't be too hard to have that type of debate. It wouldn't be too hard for, you know, the person who's saying the Christian moral teaching is really strong, really clear. 
easy, easy to define, easy to, to, easy to understand and morally correct, would probably win the argument. But, you know, I watch what I can watch, honestly, and then I give up. So, there you go. That's all I got to say on that subject. I'll probably finish it eventually at some point. Uh, amen.